Hi, welcome again to our sales discussion. Supposedly, it's gonna be a long discussion. Bala ko talaga sana tapusin ang sale article 1488. Kaso, medyo gipit na rin sa oras. And so, let's discuss, siguro kahit mga 5 articles lang from ano, article 1475. Okay? So, wag na natin patagalin pa. Let's proceed. Article 1475. The contract of sale is perfected at the moment there is a meeting of minds upon the thing which is the object of the contract and upon the price. From the moment the parties may reciprocally demand performance, subject to the provisions of the law govern governing the form of contracts. So, nature of the contract and its perfection. Yun yung dini discuss ni Article 1475. As we already know, sale is a consensual contract. It is perfected by mere consent, right? Yung delivery and yung payment ng price ay hindi pa kailangan para sa perfection. Malinaw naman yun, di ba? Kasi nga, it is perfected by mere consent. What is required is the meeting of minds of both parties, okay? So, kung naaalala nyo sa part 1 discussion natin, di ba nga? At the perfection stage ng contract of sale, hindi pa kailangan na yung ownership, I mean, hindi pa kailangan yung ownership ng, over the thing ng seller, right? That is the same principle behind the sale of future goods. However, dun sa time of delivery or consummation stage ng sale, dun kailangan, dun required na si seller must be the owner of the thing sold, okay? Meron kasing stages in the life of a contract of sale. Actually, halos pareho rin naman ng stages din ng life ng contract. It all started with, number one, negotiation. Diba? Tapos, after ng negotiation, second, perfection. At ang sabi ni Article 1475, magkakaroon ng perfection ng contract of sale upon the meeting of minds ng parties. Okay? Now, after perfection comes consummation. So, yung consummation ng perfected contract of sale happens uh, pag meron ng constructive or actual delivery ng determinate thing, okay? And of course, yung transfer ng ownership on the part ng seller and yung payment ng purchase price on the part ni buyer, right? Well, since Article 1475 talks about perfection, let's elaborate this topic, okay? Dito tayo mag-focused. Perfection, pag may meeting of minds, okay? Now, ano ba ang requirements for perfection ng contract of sale? It's a case-to-case -case basis. Siyempre, di ba? When the parties are face-to-face, -face, it's as simple as the offer must be accepted without qualification. Kasi di ba nga, qualified acceptance constitutes counter-offer. So, meaning, walang meeting of minds. Well, hindi ko na siya i-discuss again. Nadaanan natin to during our discussion sa Oblicon time pa. Kung gusto nyo yung balikan, well, I think Article 13, 19 discussion natin yun. So, I will try to provide the link here or sa description box para mabalikan nyo yung video which talks about this, okay? So, paano naman if yung acceptance was made through correspondence? So, yung perfection is mangyayari siya from the time na si offeror na tanggap niya yung letter of acceptance or nagkaroon siya ng knowledge dun sa acceptance ni offeree. Okay? So, if si buyer has already accepted pero hindi pa alam ni seller ang acceptance ni buyer, the seller may still withdraw his offer kasi wala pa siyang knowledge. Kailan nagkakaroon ng perfection ng contract if it is done through correspondence? Pag nagkaroon na ng knowledge si offeror or si seller okay, sa contract of sale. So, another scenario. It's when the sale is subject to a suspensive condition. Pag may suspensive condition, then perfection happens from the moment the condition is fulfilled. Pag nangyari or naganap na yung condition, 
then meron ng perfection ng contract of sale. Okay? If yung acceptance is made through an agent from the, the time acceptance is communicated to the offeror. Okay? Communicated by the agent to his principal. Doon nagkaroon ng perfection ng contract. Ano ba ang effect ng perfection? Nasa second paragraph siya, okay? Ni Article 1475. The parties may reciprocally demand performance subject to the provisions of the law governing the form of contracts. So, yung perfected contract of sale becomes an independent source of obligation and it now serves as a binding juridical relation between the parties. Kaya nga, yung parties ay meron na nga yung right to demand performance. Okay? Yun yung effect ng perfection ng contract. They may now reciprocally demand performance kasi nagkaroon na ng binding juridical relation between the parties. So, let's take an example. If si Pogi halimbawa is a supplier ng rice, okay? Tapos, etong si Ganda, nag-offer siya kay Pogi na bumili ng 500 sacks of rice, okay? At 1,800 per sacks. And so, Pogi accepted the offer of Ganda. And then, they agreed na yung rice will be delivered the following day. Siyempre, dun sa store ni Ganda. Napag-usapan din nila na upon delivery ni Pogi ng 500 sacks of rice sa store ni Ganda, si Ganda ay dun na rin magbabayad ng corresponding amount dun sa agent ni Pogi dun sa magbi-deliver, okay? And so, as agreed upon, si Pogi ay nag-deliver nga ng 500 sacks of rice dun sa tindahan ni Ganda. But then, etong si Ganda, nung panahon na magbabayad na, she can no longer be found. So, the agent tried to collect the purchase price pero wala si Ganda. Hindi. Wala siya at hindi siya nagbayad. So, question, was the sale perfected? The answer is yes, okay? There was a perfected sale. Bakit? Nagkaroon na ng meeting of minds, di ba? Between the parties, nag-agree sila. Magbibili si Ganda ng 500 sacks of rice kay Pogi. I-deliver ni Pogi kinabukasan. And then, magbabayad ng yun, certain amount. Kasi nga, parang nasa 1,800 per sacks. Okay, so whatever is the total of that. And so, nagkaroon talaga ng meeting of minds between the parties with respect dun sa offer and then dun sa cost which will constitute the contract ng dalawa. Now, so what is the remedy? Dahil nagkaroon ng perfected contract kahit pa hindi nagbayad si Ganda. The remedy is for Pogi to demand performance after the perfection. Because the law states that from the moment of perfection, yung parties may demand performance. So, pwede siyang mag-demand ng ano, payment from ganda. Okay? So, that is Article 1475. Anyway pala, etong last, ano lang, last phrase na sinasabing, uh, parties may demand performance subject to the rules governing the forms of contracts. Okay? So, daanan lang din natin ano ba tong forms of contracts na sinasabi dito. Well, under the statute of fraud, if it concerns real property, dapat in writing, regardless of the amount. ba? And then, if it is personal property, if it involves a sale of a personal property. Now, if yung amount is 500 pesos at up, yes, 500 pesos at as, then it must be in writing to be enforceable. Okay? Anyway, na-discuss na natin siya during our discussion ng obligation and contracts. And so, let's not dwell so much sa topic na to. Let's proceed with Article 1476. Okay? This is about the sale by auction. I will not be reading the ano, provision one by one. I mean the paragraph. Anyway, we discuss natin siya provision per, I mean paragraph per paragraph. Okay? Article 1476. This provides for the rules governing auction sales. Okay? Yung first paragraph 
Ang sinasabi nito is, sales of separate lots by auction are separate sales, okay? Yung lot dito, eto, yung lot na sinasabi is that it refers to the property, okay? Ito yung property, thing, or bulk of goods, which is siya yung subject for sale sa public auction, okay? Regardless of its quantity. So, pwede siyang car, jewelries, or a book, or a, a set of books, okay? And so, first paragraph of Article 1476 says that each lot is subject of a separate contract of sale. So, kahit pa there are two or more lot which pertains to one owner, okay, one seller, and then yung highest bidder ng mga lahat ng lots ay isang tao lang din, okay, same buyer. Kahit pa nga, okay, same seller, tapos same buyer over iba't ibang lot na binenta. So, ito ay magkakaroon talaga ng separate sale, okay? Yun yung paragraph 1. Another example. If Poggy has two cars na gusto niyang ibenta, pwede niyang ibenta yung dalawang car niya as one lot or pwede niya rin itong ibenta as two lots, okay? If dalawang lots, then each should be subject to a separate contract of sale, okay? Malinaw? So that is paragraph 1 ng Article 1476. Sa second paragraph, makikita mo na Yung sale by auction is perfected by the fall of the hammer, okay? So, when does the sale by auction is perfected? Sabi ni Article 1476, second paragraph, sale by auction is perfected when the auctioner announces its, its perfection by the fall of the hammer or any other customary manner. So, yung example nito ng other customary manner, like um, shouting of the term sold or kahit yung announcement ng highest bidder without the fall of the hammer. Pwede na rin, okay? Pwede siya, pasok siya sa customary manner, okay? Now, question. Before the hammer falls, eto ang question. May the bidder retract his bid and may the auctioner withdraw the goods from sale, okay? Pwede bang i-retract ni bidder yung kanyang bid and pwede bang i-withdraw ni auctioner ang goods from sale? Well, the answer, first muna dito sa kay may the bidder retract his bid? Yes, kasi every bidding is a mere offer, okay? Yung seller is merely making invitation to those present to make offers. Ginagawa naman nila yung offer nila by making bids, okay? Each bid is an offer. And so, hanggat wala pang perfection ng contract, the bidder may retract his bid, okay? And on the other hand, si auctioner naman, of course, the same way as si bidder, pwede siyang mag-retract ng kanyang bid before the hammer falls kasi wala pa ng perfection ng contract. And so, eto naman si auctioner may withdraw the goods from sale. Okay? Is that clear? Pero, wag din natin kalimutan tong last phrase ng second paragraph. Unless the auction has been announced to be without reserve. So, meron palang exception kung saan hindi na pwedeng mag-withdraw si auctioner, okay? Kapag yung auction is without reserve. So, pag ganito, the only way dun sa kay auctioner or kay owner to withdraw is pag walang bid. Walang nag-bid, I mean. So, pwede siyang mag-withdraw. Pero, pag... Meron, and then auction is without reserve, and so, yun, hindi na siya pwedeng mag-withdraw. Hindi niya na pwedeng i-withdraw yung goods from the auction sale, okay? So, paragraph 3, or the third paragraph of article 1476, actually, itong paragraph 3 and 4, it talks about the right of the seller to bid in the auction, Okay? So, a right to bid may be reserved expressly by or on behalf of the seller unless 
otherwise provided by law or by stipulation. Okay, ganito yan. Si seller, pwede siyang mag-bid in an auction sale. Okay? Pwede rin siyang mag-employ ng mga buy bidders to bid on behalf sa kanya. Provided. Okay, pwede, pero meron rules kasi sabi provided dapat number one yung right na yon yung right of the seller to bid in an auction number one must be reserved okay such right was reserved and second dapat merong notice okay notice was given that the sale is subject to a right to bid on behalf of the seller Kasi pag walang notice, sabi ni paragraph 4, it shall not be lawful for the seller to bid himself. Ang sabi pa nga, any sale contravening this rule may be treated as fraudulent by the buyer. Pero kung may notice na yung sale ay subject to a right to bid on behalf ng seller, then, okay, allowed, di ba? Hindi siya fraudulent. Walang fraud. Kasi may notice naman. Then, another requirement, the right to bid by the seller is not prohibited by law or by stipulations. So, that's it. That's Article 1476 or sale by auction. Na simplified na natin. Let's not dwell so much on this topic, okay? Proceed na naman tayo kay Article 1477. The ownership of the thing sold shall be transferred to the vendee upon the actual or constructive delivery thereof. So, when ownership is transferred, actually, pabalik-balik na ever since. Is not perfection of the contract that transfer ownership? Kung hindi, ano ba? Yung delivery, okay? It is either actual or constructive delivery. Right? But then, meron din naman siyang exception. Merong scenario wherein na deliver na either actual or constructive, nagkaroon na ng actual or constructive delivery, but then hindi pa na transfer yung ownership, and that is found under Article 1478. So, wag na tayong mag with Article 1477. Let's proceed with Article 1478. Okay? So, Article 1478 provides for an exception to the rule ni Article 1477 na kung saan pag daw yung transfer ng ownership is nangyayari upon delivery. Eto, na-deliver na, hindi pa matatransfer yung ownership. Papaano? Or in what case? If the parties, di ba? 1478, the parties may stipulate that ownership in the thing shall not pass to the purchaser until he has fully paid the price, okay? Meaning, based on Article 1477 and Article 1478, yung ownership of the thing sold shall be transferred to the buyer upon delivery. No doubt, no question, ganun yung rule, di ba? Either actual or constructive. Unless, yung contract nila contains stipulation that ownership of the thing sold shall not pass to the buyer until he has fully paid the price. Okay? Meaning, yung payment pala ng purchase price, okay? Makikita mo rin dito na yung purchase price pala is not necessary to transfer ownership, right? Non-payment of the purchase price after the thing has been delivered will prevent the transfer of ownership only if, according to Article 1478, merong stipulations for that. Okay? That is provided in Article 1478. Kasi, upon delivery, supposedly nga na-transfer ng ownership, but then, pwede tayong maglagay ng stipulations na hindi pa matatransfer ang ownership hanggat hindi pa nababayaran in full yung purchase price. In that case, kahit na na-deliver na, yung determinate thing, na-retain pa rin ni seller yung ownership until such time na na-fully paid na ni buyer yung corresponding purchase price. So, that's it. That's Article 1477 and 1478. So, let's proceed with Article 1479. A promise to buy and sell a determinate thing for a price certain is reciprocally demandable. 
an accepted unilateral promise to buy or to sell, a determinate thing for a price certain is binding upon the promisor if the promise is supported by a consideration distinct from the price. So, mutual promise and unilateral promise. Yung first, itong first paragraph, obviously mutual promise, di pa? It's as simple as, si Pogi nag-promise to buy something and Ganda promised to sell it at an agreed price, okay? Then this is actually as good as a perfected contract of sale. Kung yun nga, kung si Pogi nag-promise to buy something from Ganda, like a determinate thing, tapos etong si Ganda promised to sell it at an agreed price to Pogi. So, yung promise to buy and sell is clearly a bilateral reciprocal contract. Meaning, yung parties are bound by their contract. Okay? And so, if isa sa kanila ay hindi makapag-comply sa kanyang obligation, yung other party has the right either to demand fulfillment or yung recession ng obligation. Of course, with payment of damages. Okay? So, proceed tayo kay second paragraph. Ano ba yung rules in unilateral promise to sell or to buy? Eto, let's differentiate if yung promise was accepted by the offeree or not. Okay, so eto. If walang acceptance by the offeree, yung unilateral promise is, of course, without legal effects. Kasi nga, yung unilateral promise was ano, hindi pa na-accept. Now, if it is accepted by the offeree, okay, take note, let me make it clear. If yung option was given without consideration, meaning it is a mere offer to sell, ibig sabihin, yung offer is not binding until accepted. And so, if acceptance is made before pa nagkaroon ng withdrawal from the offeror, then it constitutes a binding sale. Kahit na yung option was not supported by a sufficient consideration. Now, if yung offer was supported by a consideration distinct from the price, yung acceptance ng promise will create a binding force doon sa nag-promise. Okay? Actually, let's take an example para mas klaro, para mas maintindihan natin to. Okay? So, wait lang. Eto. If si Pogi, he offered for sale to Ganda his car, say Mitsubishi Expander with plate number 1ABC123, say for 1 million pesos, and binigyan niya si Ganda ng 10-day period to accept that offer. Okay? So, let's say 10-day period from October 1, 2021. Okay? Ganda now, ganito. Di ba, October 1, 2021, 10-day period to accept yung binigay ni Pogi in favor of ganda. On October 8, can Pogi withdraw the offer? Yes, because this is a mayor offer. It can be withdrawn at any time. Okay? Now, if yung nangyari pala is on October 11, October 11 para gustong i-withdraw ni Pogi yung kanyang offer. Is it possible? Can Pogi withdraw his offer? Yes, of course. With more reason na pwede siyang mag-withdraw because yung 10-day period has already elapsed. Okay? Wala na. Tapos na yung 10-day period na binigay niya to ganda. Now, supposing ito. Supposing if si ganda pala ay nagbayad ng 1,000 pesos para doon sa offer. Okay, so can he withdraw the offer? No. Bakit? Because he gave, I mean, Ganda gave consideration this thing from the price. This is called an option money. Hindi na pwedeng ma-withdraw kasi, I mean, hindi siya pwedeng mag-withdraw on October 8. Dahil, Nagbigay si Ganda ng 1,000 pesos for that. ba? For that 10-day period to accept. Now, if on October 11, can he withdraw the offer? Yes. Bakit? 
kasi si Ganda consented to the offer within the 10-day period. And nagbayad siya ng 1,000 pesos for that. And so, dahil dun, Pogi cannot withdraw. Diba? Dahil nagkaroon ng option contract. However, dahil dito sa tapos na, tapos na yung 10-day period dahil October 11 na pwede, pwede na. Okay. Now, if ganda consented, eto yung tanong. If halimbawa, within that 10-day period, ganda consented, how much will she pay para sa sasakyan? Kasi binibenta ni Pogi for 1 million peso. Should we deduct the 1 million, I mean the 1,000 pesos na binayad ni ganda in advance? So, hindi. Magbabayad si ganda ng 1 million pesos because yung 1,000 pesos na option money is not part of the purchase price. Diba nga? It is distinct from the price. Yung 1,000 pesos talaga na binayad ni ganda kay Pogi is para doon sa 10-day period to decide to accept or to give her consent doon sa offer. Okay? And so, dahil doon, if nag-agree siya or if she consented, I mean, she consented to the sale of that Mitsubishi Expander with plate number ABC123 for 1 million pesos, then she needs to pay the 1 million pesos. Okay? Distinct and separate doon sa 1,000 pesos na binigay niya as option money. Okay? Distinct. This is, yun nga, sabi ko kanina, option contract. Now, let's compare this concept ng option contract with earnest money naman later on pag nag-discuss na tayo ng article 1482 ata. Okay? Anyway, let's end here. Tapusin na natin. Pigil muna tayo dito. Let's just continue our discussion next time. Okay? Good night, everyone. But before that, if you find this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and click that notification bell to update you on our next upload. Thanks again. Bye-bye!